you've ever claimed that the Marvel films were amazingly good, go ahead and hit that unsubscribe button because I don't want you here. Welcome back guys. Today we are taking a look at the first cry plate carrier I've ever owned, the JPC 2.0. Let's get the commercial bit out of the way straight from the start. I was sent this by a company in France called AG Tactical. Good thing about this arrangement is Cry has nothing to do with this, so I can say whatever the hell I want about the plate carrier. Obviously I would anyway, I'm not here to feed you any bullshit, but there is, even if I had an inclination to do that, Cry didn't give this to me, a separate retailer did. Um, so yeah, great freedom in that respect. Colorway, you've probably noticed that straight away. So AG, they stock a lot of Cry products in Europe, they also, have quite an interesting line going in bringing in unique or certainly unusual colorways of cry products. Uh, they stock loads of other stuff as well. Um, Eagle, Dry Fire, loads of really good brands. But yeah, they uh, they got in a batch of Tropic, Arid, and Multicam Black JPC 2.0s quite recently. They sold out. Can't click in gloves. They sold out in no time. I was very lucky. They sent this one to me. To, uh, to go over, just to talk about here. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. A uh, couple of Paul Harold style pre-warnings. This is not gonna be an action video. I'm not gonna be running around shooting. Um, if you want that, Garand Thumb has a video on the JPC 2.0. If you want some like dench bearded operator dude telling you whether it's durable, comfortable, whatever, how operator it is, uh, go and look at another video. Just fair warning, this is just going to be me talking through the features of the JPC 2.0. What does JPC stand for, for those of you who aren't familiar? Jumpable plate carrier. What I'm holding in my hands right now, this is a medium, sappy cut. They do a swimmer's cut as well, and obviously different sizes for different plates. This is 700 grams in its base configuration, as you can see here. Just front and rear plate bags and the three-band cummerbund. That's really light. This, this is insanely light. As it is, obviously you can only carry plates and a little bit of admin space up here and mounts and patches, but obviously you will add a little more weight in Cordura once you add a back panel, once you add a, a placard on the front, but overall it's a really light plate carrier. The original JPC-1, um, that was, it didn't exactly start the trend on these modern, really slim, lightweight armor vests, but it was definitely one of the first ones and it probably popularized the idea to a large extent. So yeah, this thing's really light, really slim. As the Garand Thumb video says, if you watch it, it's not designed to be loaded with a ton of stuff. You want like a CPC, ABS, uh, First Spear, Mayflower, something else if you want to carry like a ton of gear. But if you if you can get some light plates in this thing, then you know, you're know you gonna be good to go with a really lightweight protective package. Before I go into the actual individual details of everything that's going on, and we are gonna be talking mostly about you know the construction of materials, a closely look at all the features but before that uh, one thing I would say with cry plate carriers is they are a, a platform to be built on if you look at companies like Axel Advanced um, who do great stuff by the way and, and many others there are a lot of companies that make stuff for the cry plate carriers placards back panels different cover buttons shoulder strap mods mods to the standard cover buttons um, there's tons of it out there so yeah these are not cheap and just be prepared if you do go for a cry play carrier you kind of need to bear in mind from the off that you're kind of buying a foundation or like a blank slate house that you need to decorate build upon how you want to phrase it whatever analogy you want to use you've got to do a lot to kind of make one of these or the avs or whatever to, to make it into what you're going to really want at the end of the road. I've made an analogy before with helmets, for example. You've got like the Ops Core was first in terms of like the modern tactical ones, then Team Wendy, then MTech, for example. And the Ops Core, there's you can build it because there's a huge aftermarket, you can build it into exactly what you want. The uh, Team Wendy doesn't have as much of an aftermarket, and the MTech has even less, but the MTech, you probably take it out of the box and it's like pretty good to go by comparison. Similar-ish with the cry plate carriers, they are that kind of obscure equivalent where there's a huge aftermarket because 
These are massive on the commercial market. They are issued to loads of military forces, especially the US, in huge numbers. Um, so there's tons you can do to build on this platform. And what do you get when you buy one? Comes in, just a plastic bag, simple as that. Comes with an instruction manual. I'm not gonna flick through it, but if you're buying one and you're putting place in it, especially you, you guys in America, um, you just have uh, home defense, whatever, um, read this, it tells you about, it's got a lot of safety advice and like properly fitting plates, properly adjusting the cummerbund and fitting it to you, putting it on and off correctly. If you're not familiar with body armor, you know, there's only a few pages that you need to read in this thing. So but, you know, do check it out. So that aside, let's put it down on the table and uh, go into some more of the details. So straight away, probably the main thing most people are gonna to wanna to do with a plate carrier, let's put some magazines and ammunition onto the front of it. How are you gonna do that? Good thing with the JPC 2.0, you have three different types of placard, chassis, micro chest rig, whatever, that you, that you can put on the front. First off, of course, is the actual cry option. Um, obviously, they sort of interface the best, they lock in and like mesh the best, but they take the longest to, uh, to apply and to remove and change. So what they do with the cry ones, they slap on the front. I don't have one to demonstrate with me, I'm afraid, because I don't own one. Apologies about that. But they slap onto the Velcro on the front. And there is this extra, there is this sleeve. Um, it's like a separate kangaroo pouch. Uh, and these straps from the placard go down inside and they Velcro in. They uh, lock in there really securely. There's also this press tab underneath and the uh, cry placards, they have a strap that comes around, clips onto that, and then they can't lift away from the Velcro. The other two options are either um, your Ferro and SKD tack that use G-hooks or your standard like Spiritus, Mayflower, um, there's bloody dozens of them that use one inch buckles. Now, to attach those, we're gonna go into the admin pocket up the top here. By the way, I'm gonna, one thing you wanna check out is the Axel Advanced Zip because the there's no good way really of getting into this admin pocket. Like they, they could have just added a little webbing loop up the top here just so you could have something useful to grab on. It's like, it's not the end of the world or anything, but it's just not ideal. So there are two little webbing loops and I've pre-attached a buckle to one of them just for demonstration purposes. So we've got these webbing loops that can be tucked away and they end up inside the admin pocket up top of the chest here. One inch webbing and what you get is field repair buckles one inch type, so there's a split in the plastic. Hopefully I can get that on camera just there. I've just take any of those, any of these standard placards, you know, this is a custom one that I had made, but it doesn't matter, you know, any, anything with these one inch buckles, you clip it, clip it both sides, of course, slap it down and it's on. Um, you do end up with a lot of exposed loop if you don't use a cry panel, um, but you know, it, it's on there. If you're not using the one inch buckles, you just put a G-hook straight through the loop and that's so you're good to go with the ferro concepts gear. If you're using the cry placards, you don't need these loops at all and they literally just tuck away again inside like that. I'll do this one off camera. There is no uh, pals, no molly webbing on the front. It's just loop. So you uh, you will need some sort of a panel, even if it's a just a, a panel that has pals and molly webbing on it. Um, the command we'll get to in a minute. Up to the admin pocket. So you've got loop fields, which are both loop and for pouches. So you can put patches and pouches up top here if you so desire. Not ideal access to the admin, as I say. I don't think it's great. There are elastic loops inside the admin though, so you can retain stuff there. Nothing other than that inside of it. Just a simple pouch. I recommend an aftermarket zip to get into that more easily, uh, more quietly, more quickly, etc., etc. Something I noticed inspecting this, like this, so this this bar tack is just totally on the piss. You know, like if we look on this side, nice and straight, straight up and down. Over this side, not so much, just uh, wonky. Now, um, is that going anywhere? No, that is a nice solid bar tack. It's absolutely secure. 
is not going to come off just because it's you know off kilter doesn't make it weaker but um yeah they, they make a lot of these things and the stitching isn't always 100 percent perfect all the time with the cry stuff people people get real brand um focused and they say oh spiritus sucks first bit sucks cry sucks whatever blah 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 the reality is they they all have their slight off moments because they are these things are sewn by humans. It's gonna happen. They're not gonna all be perfect all the time, even though they are, you know, bloody expensive. Moving around to the back now, a few things to discuss uh, on that stitching topic. So we got a we got a nice drag handle here. It's well integrated. It's stitched quite far down by the looks of it. One and a half inch webbing. Um, folded to make a good grab point if you have to drag someone or just to carry the plate carrier. Uh, if we look up close just here, you can see where they've finished off a stitch and there's a lot of extra stitching just there. And then on the other side, uh, there it was clearly a Friday afternoon. So yeah, might doesn't really matter the, the drag handle itself is not actually going anywhere. That isn't the stitching that you're gonna have to drag someone by. You know, I just like to show these things on camera to show you that even the, the absolute best brands in the world, they still make mistakes because they are sewn by humans. Um, anyway, we've got the drag handle webbing. It's absolutely up to the job, nice and strong. More pals that is also covered in loop. So you can do pouches or patches up top here. Um, the back is actually full pals. You know, a lot of it's hidden by the cummerbund, but you can use normal pals pouches, legacy stuff, all on the back. Prominent feature, of course, the zips, the cry panels. They just zip on, and there's there's some uh, clips to attach them to some of this pals webbing. You got various panels. There's a there's a completely pals one. There's a backpack. There's an assaulters. Um, there's aftermarket companies that do them. You've got. A whiskey 2.4 to a laser cut one. You've got Grey Ghost gear recently, last shot show. They came out with a line that are cry compatible. Yeah, a lot of lot of options on the back here on what you can do. Uh, on, on the good side of the stitching, if we look up close, you can see uh, you know all these bar tacks on the PALS webbing are, are really nicely done. Um, extremely tough and durable. You know that that webbing is on there. So the cummerbund uh, and attaching it, adjusting it. It's a bit of a spaghetti junction going on here. Um, this this bungee cord, elasticated cord, is how you attach and adjust the cummerbund. So you, as you can see, it's sort of looped. It's looped through the ends of the cummerbund and then through the pals on the on the plate carrier back, uh, the rear plate bag itself. The um, the threads they go through this. Uh, Hyperlon piece down the side. You can pull those. This is actually at its minimum right now. The good thing with having this cord is you get all this stretch here. Obviously, because I don't have a plate in right now, it wouldn't crush the plate, of course. It, it, the, the cord would just stretch out and you, as you move, run, breathe, eat, shit, hydrate, dehydrate, etc., 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 that that can move with you. And that's pretty good problem is and the reason you probably want a back panel is if you thread pals pouches through all this stuff it's going to lock these into place they're not going to be able to move and you'll lose that elastic feature Guys, i'm not sure why they went for the hyperlon on the side here it's, it seems like they should have just used cordura because hyperlon is just i'm not a fan of it and then we'll talk about that more in a minute uh, the zips are probably ykk Vizlon zips, real big chunky. I don't know the exact number, but these are as tough of a zip as you can get for a, you know, a duty application. We'll look at the inside briefly. So you've got your label, it tells you what it is. It tells you the sizing, simple. Um, these panels here are quite interesting. So you're gonna be able to fit a wide variety of brands of plate as long as it's a medium sappy cut you'll be able to fit quite a few different brands uh, different thicknesses into this rear plate bag into both plate bags because these panels here stretch they are not tweed dura stretch like you get on the knees of the g3 combat pants they are a different fabric more spandex 
Um, it's kind of similar to the stretch on the Gen 2 uh, combats actually, here on the sides. And, uh, and you've got that, got that on the front plate bag as well. Cordura down the middle, spacer mesh would have been nice. The thing I find weird is there's this spacer mesh panel on top. It's a really nice thick, it's like a, a cushiony spacer mesh, loads of airflow through that except it's only at the top. So this won't actually do anything for you really in terms of airflow under the, uh, you know, against your body under the plate stamp. This little bit won't do a lot. It's, you know, the Cordura is nice and tough, abrasion resistant, but I'm not sure why they put this mesh just at the top. Um, really couldn't tell you on that one. Um, as I said, the, the other plate bag is basically mirrored on internally. A couple of little, Features to talk about in terms of optional extras. You can add full soft armor coverage to the sides with an optional uh, side armor bag, the cry cells that goes onto these loops. If you're not using them, you know, just tuck them, uh, tuck them away like so, and then put your plaque on on top. Inside the rear plate bag, now I've removed one of these. This is a field repairable ladder lock. Um, this one normally goes onto this loop here, one inch women, sits like so. I've left this one on. And what these are for is for the side straps that are included with the JPC 2.0. Now these replace the normal three band skeletal cummerbund. All you do is you loop the webbing through one of these ladder locks and there's some uh, there's Velcro on the other end and that literally acts as your cummerbund for the, like, the absolute slickest setup possible. If you don't, if you don't intend to use them, you can just take these off, and they won't be like squished against your body underneath the cummerbund when you're wearing the uh, the rig fully loaded up. The supplied skeletal three-band cummerbund is pretty pretty decent. It has to be said. It is. Um, there's two layers to it. First off, it's good because you get all this air th flow through the middle, of course. Um, pretty nicely stitched. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty decent. Um, but it's, it, there is an element of stiffening to it, just a little bit, which makes a fair difference from, from what I've been told. You know, I don't, I don't spend a ton of time running around in body armor. Like when I got home from last deployment, they took my plates off me. But yeah, when, when you do have the, a bit of weight on the thing, it's got a little bit of stiffening vertically. And then each band also, like this isn't just webbing. There is a, there is a stiffener inside this I think this is edging tape. I'm not exactly sure what this fabric is, but on the inside, um, there is it. There, I can't actually show you. I'm not sure if it's it's Tegris, the stuff that looks like carbon fiber. I think it is, but it's it's stitched uh, away on the the inside. Now you can mount pouches either on the outer surface or on the inner surface because you can just weave them however you like. You can also do both if you wanted. So you could have a pouch here and then on the inside here, but as uh, people who've used these things a lot will tell you, this is not a rig to be loaded down because it just doesn't have to, like the supporting structure to, to spread the weight. Um, so, you know, you want a minimum of pouches on here really, but you do have the option inside, outside, all the way around, even both if you really needed it, um, or you can do, you know, side plates on the inside. There's, um, there's just a, uh, a PAL threaded pouch that Cry do. Um, just just sits on the inside so you can add your side plates, 6x8, whatever they are. Then pa normal pouches with GP, mags, whatever on the inside. There are wings you can get for radios, for like your 152s, guys who might need that. Options wise on the Cummerbund, there's a lot. There's a lot of companies making these. Um, you can put the Spiritus one straight on here. You've got ANA Tactical. Um, I would also check out Coyote Tactical Solutions and these combat systems at the time of filming, there's some some good ones I've seen online that you can add to the JPC 2.0. Check out uh, Axel, of course, they make accessories, um, all sorts for the for the JPC. The included is called EDOF, Enhanced Doffing or Emergency Doffing, both really. Um, that's what these uh, weird looking handles are for here. I'll roll in some. Uh, it's a little b-roll of how the the emergency doff feature works on the original jpc you had to buy some extra stuff to uh, to be able to quickly release jpc one and it's built in with the two basically if, with the way velcro works velcro doesn't like to slide over itself but if you peel the edge then it'll come off 
and so that's what these handles do and it's the same with the shoulder straps now the shoulder straps I don't get why they're still on Hyperlon when they when they moved to the JPC2 I really thought they'd get rid of these Hyperlon and make these sections out of webbing or Cordura or something else because on the JPC1 these were known weak points um, as I mentioned before Hyperlon had this had this like fashionable phase I want to say something like six or seven years ago and first bit started doing a few bits with it for like maritime gear which is it's good for maritime stuff uh, it doesn't absorb any water because it's basically rubber um, weirdly in the manual for the JPC2 cry called this neoprene it's not neoprene um, I, I don't know if on a molecular level it's neoprene but it is essentially a type of rubber and it's not very abrasion resistant. You, if you get a little nick in it, which is fairly easy, you can just you can pretty much just tear it quite easily. Um, it's not that it's not that strong. And these are vital points that are literally holding up your plate bags. It's not like they're going to break straight away by any stretch. You know, special forces guys use these; they last a good while. You know, depending on your application. If you're not constantly crawling over sharp rocks, it, it, you know, I'm sure it'll last you years, but yeah, that, this stuff is light, it's flexible, but it's not very strong, and especially with these big holes through it. Uh, there's not yeah, there's not a lot of structural strength to that. But anyway, you um there's some tweeved your stretch shoulder covers, they're not pads, there's no there is sort of a padding effect because uh, there's a lot of loop velcro plus the tweeve um, going on with the shoulder straps. But yeah, the shoulder straps to me probably one of the weaker points of the design both literally and figuratively one thing I forgot to mention on the cummerbund this middle row has some loop on the inside for attaching different accessories and stuff like that securing I think side plates secures them in place really locks them in position I think that's it guys I think we've gone everything on the build of JPC 2.0 so let's let's briefly round this out and talk about how I'd set mine up <clears throat> So as I mentioned before, the Cryplay carriers are a platform to build on. Now purely for hobby usage like mine, I can't get away with wearing non-issue plate carriers. I don't get issued anything this huge. Um, what I would do for the front, start off Shore Concepts Arc uh, placard. It's kind of like a one cell Spiritus chassis-ish with some extra things going on. And I think their current versions of it have facilities for the male part of some tubes, first bit tubes. Now you combine one of them with a Spiritus tubes, uh, PALS tube uh, cummerbund. Now the Spiritus ones are three band as well, so they just um, they'll work with the back panel on the JPC. Come round, they'll have the female tubes. Sure, they'll have the male tubes. Click that in, boom, you're good to go with, uh, with quick release of the cummerbund. Get rid of the standard one. Back panel, to me personally, it doesn't really matter. I might just put a Whiskey 241 just to, to cover up all this spaghetti stuff that's going on here with a nice, neat laser, uh, laser cut PAL section. Grey Ghost don't offer theirs in, in uh, like non standard colours, you know, weird multi cams and stuff. But if you've got a normal, <laughs> like a normal colour JPC2, it's easier to get accessories because like, finding stuff in Tropic is not immediately as easy. Yeah, back panel, probably just cover it with something that I won't really use, doesn't really matter. Admin pocket, gotta get the axle advance zip up in here. You need that thing, that's so much better. My brother has one, he has a JPC as well. He's got the zip, just, it just attaches to the Velcro, and sort of replaces the Velcro as it were. It, it disables the Velcro that's in the admin pocket. Shoulders wise, just to add a bit of space and mesh, I'm thinking the Shore Concepts Arc shoulder pads. They're really nice. I don't need the padding because I'm not going to be putting a load of weight on this thing. But just to have, have space and mesh on the shoulders. I, I'm a big fan personally. The more space and mesh against the body, the better. It just lets that sweat evaporate. Um, you know, I haven't worn play carriers that much in the desert. But you know, a little bit and just the sweat. The sweat that builds up inside of us. It's, it's horrible and, and, you know, I'm sure a lot of you know and having that space and mesh just alleviates that problem just a bit and just, just makes just makes a real noticeable difference. For those of you in the States, I know most people who watch these videos are in the US. Uh, if you 
kind of want to put armor plates inside, you know, make sure they are to medium sappy spec. Don't buy steel because they're shit and they'll kill you. Um, good ceramic or polymer. Uh, you, you'll be able to, with this stretch on the inside of the plate bags, you'll be able to fit a pretty wide range of plates. I don't know exactly which ones, you know, Hesco and Spartan and blah blah blah. And all those different models, there's tons of them. But you'll be able to fit a good range inside the play bags. Range of different brands, different thicknesses, different types, blah blah blah. Just uh, you know, get yourself some good ones if you can, if they're not out of all out of stock at the time of this video publishing. And I think that's it, folks. Thank you to AG Tactical. I will link them down in the description. If you're in Europe, check them out. Even if you're not, it might be worth looking at anyway. I'm not going to say why right now. They might have some interesting things coming. Just a hint. Just, you know, follow them on social media. Check their website and, and follow their Facebook and Instagram. I don't put much... Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, check out my other platforms. I don't upload much here these days. Uh, the links for Instagram, Facebook page, blah, blah, blah. be down in the description. Some of these other companies I mentioned, I'll try to link them down in the description as well. Uh, or to the side, whichever... If you're watching on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, wherever they are, I'll try and at or link these different companies. If you're not heard of them, I'll do my best. And other than that, guys, if you, uh, if you have anything you want to know, head to the full9.net. That link will definitely be in the text description for this video on any platform. Check that out. There's a group on Facebook. Any questions you want to ask me, ask me in that Facebook group. And other than that, just watching, guys. And it's been a long one, but I wanted to give you a lot of details because these things are not cheap. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.